in this video we'll try to understand the difference between basic Azure load balancer and standard Azure load balancer we'll try to compare the features and the situation where we need to do what kind of load balancing okay so let's get started the very first thing that comes into the mind when we talk about uh, the Azure load balancer let's talk about the public load balancer first is the IP address IP configuration right so if I talk about Azure basic load balancer it would be the basic of public IP address okay but if we talk about a standard load balancer it would be it cannot be basic and it would always be standard SKU of public IP address the thing is these couldn't be vice versa okay it's more like the basic load balancer cannot use the standard SKU of IP address and the standard load balancer cannot use the basic SKU of public IP address. The difference between the basic and the standard SKU of public IP address has been discussed in the previous video. Okay, that's the first thing. Now the second thing is uh, backend pool okay so in case of basic load balancer we discussed that part a single VM could be the part of backend pool for multiple VM it should be either part of availability set or VMSS those could be the back end in case of basic load balancer but in case of azure standard load balancer they would be different because the standard tier can spin any virtual machine in a single virtual network including blends of scale set availability set and any machines okay so it is like it is a part of uh, oh sorry uh, okay come on come on yeah dude okay so if we talk about the standard load balancer it could be the back end could be any kind of virtual machine of of the virtual network it could be the blends of uh, availability set single vm or vmss so it has the broader range of back end pool okay any VM in a single VNet that includes the VM set VMSS or anything like that okay but uh, in case of basic we can have only these if we talk about single VM uh, it could be single VM until it part of it is a part of a B a V set or VMSS that part is clear cool now let's talk about the availability zone well we all know the basic IP address is not zone redundant so it is not supported but if you want to load if you want to balance your load uh, in a zone redundant fashion 
or you have the VMs running inside the different zones and you want to spin a load balancer above it, you got to use the standard load balancer. Okay. So supports a V zone. So this is the architecture feature of standard load balancer that actually driving a lot of customer to the standard tier is this availability zones where you can scale a service out across up to three zones in a single region for 99.99% SLA. Okay, so it provides 99.99 SLA. Okay. Now, if I talk about diagnostics, the basic tier, this basic tier has, why are you doing this? Oh, sorry, guy just talking to the Excel, I think. Okay, so the basic tier offers some basic diagnostics through log analytics, okay, and that is paid per GB for monitoring data log analytics all right but if we talk about standard load balancer we can opt for Azure monitor standard tier offers much more data through Azure monitor okay so here Azure monitor okay and this appears to be the focus for operational monitoring and alerting okay all right now by default this basic load balancer is not secure what do you mean by that is this even applies for the basic ip address as well once you create it it is open for everyone you should go ahead and apply the nsg always okay not secure by default and nsg is recommended because it is open for all by default but if we talk about standard load balancer it is secure by default means nobody can access anything you got to whitelist the IPs okay cool now if you have seen while we were creating the while we while uh, we were performing the load balancers demonstration basic load balancers dem demonstration it was taking a lot of time while applying the rules, validation, creation, and even applying the NAT rules. But if I talk about the standard load balancer, it doesn't take that long, okay? So uh, we can say, manage, management operation 
slow we can say like that but in case of standard it is pretty fast faster than the basic load balancer and if we talk about the SLA the basic load balance is implied in the virtual machine SLA and it's free of cost okay and not paying anything for basic load balancer for standard there is price involved as per the transactions so it's free of cost and SLA implies as per VM for example VM with the premium disk is 99% VM inside the availability set is 99.95% okay but if we talk about standard this is 99.99% okay cool now there are certain things that we also need to talk about no need to remember or like mug up those things okay let me okay so it is like for basic we can have or it supports up to 300 instances for standard it is thousand instances oh I forgot to mention here data processed inbound and outbound okay uh, I'm just trying to check the pricing if there is anything else involved I'll share the link uh, in the description and you can check the pricing as well but it's not free it ap applies as per the data process but I think something is also involved as per the load balancing rules I think net rules are free but not the load balancing rule and uh, as well as the data processed so I can mention here like add LB but do go through the link I'll share in the description okay now if I talk about the health probes we all know what health probe is right if I talk about the health probes it supports TCP and HTTP but okay uh, come on in case of standard load balancer we do have TCP HTTP and HTTPS okay cool now standard load balancer standard internal load balancer specifically supports HA ports okay it's a high availability ports and that helps in active active configuration especially when you are uh, using load balancer for the NVA okay so HA port supported where internal load balancer okay cool and here if we talk about HA ports not supported so that means it gives provides active passive okay cool now 
when you place your VM behind the basic load balancer, let uh, it doesn't lose the internet connectivity. Okay, but if you place the VM behind the uh, standard internal load balancer, you lose the internet connectivity. You gotta create the outbound rules and use the uh, public IP or add the same VM behind the public load balancer and create the outbound rules. That doesn't apply on basic load balancer. Okay, well, these are the basic differences between basic load balancer and standard load balancer, which is uh, very important to understand. So to just to rephrase, basic uses basic PIP and standard uses standard PIP. This is the backend. So in case of basic, it uses single VM, AV set or VMSs, but the standard has a broad range. Now, this is zone redundant. Standard supports, but basic doesn't support it. Okay, now this is the monitoring part. Okay, uh, basic load balancer has the log, log analytics that you can opt for or the Azure monitor logs. But in case of standard, it's Azure monitor multi-dimensional metrics and alerting is there. Like uh, there is a better way of monitoring the load balancer, okay? Now this is, we can, we can by default nature uh, secure, let's put. This is NSG recommended in basic, but in standard, you got a whitelist. All right, so management of operations a little slower as compared to the standard. It is free, the basic is free, and SL is as per the VM, 99.99% and pricing involved, it's not free. There is one more option, HTTPS for health probe in standard and also support the HF port in internal load balancer. Well, that that's all about it. Uh, in next video, we'll try to configure the outbound rules for standard load balancer. We'll try to configure one standard load balancer as a internal or one for the public, just to understand what we talked about here. Well, thank you. Thank you for watching. You have a good day.